Hello there. I hope everybody's having a great day. I decided to share another installment of working on our file folder stacked envelope junk journal. So I've had uh, two previous installments where we uh, put, put it together. So it started with a file folder that was covered and the book pages will go here. And then the second part here is the uh, stacked envelopes and they've all been covered now. That was kind of first and then working into the second episode, um, finished that up. So we have six envelopes that are pockets now and have little pullouts. And now we're just getting to all the fun little tucks and tags and different decorative things. So today I wanted to, we're still working on the first one, but I wanted to point out a couple things about the last episode. So uh, what I showed in that was getting the, the rest of the, uh, bones of the journal done and then we started working on this front pocket and I had made uh, and shown how to do these window tags that could be like a little um, a little frame or you could make it into a pocket and then it's a place for your little tag so I had mass made a bunch of these and I this week I actually finished up a bunch more tags that I'll have now for other projects um, but one of the things that I had mentioned in the video, and then it didn't really work out as planned, was the, the window that I had made when I made bulk, I used these acetate bags, and they worked out great. I just used my sticker machine and ran this through the sticker machine, stuck it on there and cut it out, and it, it was good. During the video, I did a little demonstration, and I used something like this, which is a the acetate that the stickers, when you buy stickers, they come in the other bag, and then there's a bunch of stickers stuck here and you pull them off and use them. So I used that. Well, I, I put the frame on there, but I didn't take the time to cut it out during the video. So after, after I turned the video off, I went to do that. And of course it just peeled right off because this is meant to have stickers peel off so that you can use them. So I thought, well, that was silly. I didn't think of that. So I wanted to do another example and try using a glue stick or using my fine line uh, with Mod Podge. But I didn't have, this is the only piece I have and you can't see, but there's an ink splotch and it's scratched up. So I don't want to use this one. So I will do the experiment next time uh, I try this and see if it works and I'll let you know. But worst case, I thought what I can do is stitch around the edges um, and then that would hold it in too because I just love how thick this one is. It's just a nice, nice for a window. So we'll try that next time. If you try it in the meantime, let me know how it works. So that was one thing. And then the other thing I noticed was I'm kind of attention to detail person and I had just eyeballed putting this on this front and I had glued it down and it wasn't quite straight for me. So my fix for that is if something's just a little off and it just bothers you, do a border, another border, and make it be off in the other directions and it'll just kind of make it all look like it was intentional. So for me, I had two fixes I needed to do anyway. I was trying to put something pretty thick in this pocket and because it's at an angle, it kept wanting to pull apart here on the corner. So. I thought, okay, all I can I can kind of kill two birds with one stone and, and try to patch that and do my whole crooked thing. So I used a piece of tea bag and glued it on. That didn't hold very well either. Um, and here I used, I kind of tore a piece of paper and I intentionally didn't want this to be straight so that it would kind of all look a little wonky and, and that was fine with me then. So that worked out, but then I kept having it pull apart here. So I just used, I made a little file folder uh, tab here and then it glued it. And, and the two things it did, it, it made another cute little element, but then it's kind of can be open a little bit and this can go in and out and I don't have to worry about it tearing anymore. So that was two fixes. So I wanted to show that. And then we're gonna today work on some notepads and uh, coffee staining paper and um, there's a couple little elements in here and then of course I've done three because every time I do one I think of another idea and I kind of want to do the next one a little bit different So basically what I've made here is a little kind of like a checkbook thing um, But it's just a little journaling pad so you can it's got 
some coffee dyed paper in here, and then I've made a little pocket. So on this one, just to kind of show you my thought process, I had this paper that went with my vintage floral theme, and I really liked the text here. So for this one, I looked for a piece that had the text, but the way I wanted it to open, the way it worked out for me to open it was the rest of the paper was below it. So basically that ended up being my flap. The other ones are a little bit different, so I'll show you that, but I, I just love that paper. So uh, I, it doesn't really matter what size, you can make these any size. I wanted it to fit in that envelope, so I basically started with the outside part and just kind of measured maybe a half inch smaller than the width of my uh, uh, the envelope that I was putting it in. And then I just had, I don't know, probably an inch hanging over for my flap. And then from there, I went and coffee stained some paper. So I'm gonna tell you how I did that because that I just love the, the aged look of everything for this journal. So to coffee stain, I actually used for this one was just some a new pad of ledger paper and it's not a huge difference but it just gives you that aged uh, aged look so basically to do that you can also use um, I, while I was doing it of course I, I like to do everything in batches so I actually wanted some like the elementary school um, paper and then I did some uh, graph paper that's lined on the other side I like that and then I have this one, which I haven't done yet. I already like the color of it, but I might tea stain or something, just or just even wet it and bake it, just to give it the same uh, worn out look. So you start out with new paper, and all all I did was uh, set an oven at 225. Uh, I got a glass baking dish, and then you could use either a strong cup of coffee, or I just. I have a coffee machine, so I just took the used up grounds and put it in a measured cup with some more water, hot water. It probably doesn't matter if it's hot or cold. And uh, let it sit just for a minute, put it in the, a glass, like a brownie pan. And then what I've learned in doing this, some papers, the inks aren't as uh, stable, permanent as others. So coffee's acidic. So I just really dip it, get it wet, and take it right out so that it doesn't just take away all of my lines on my paper, which I've had had that happen on some. So take it out, lay two pieces flat on a cookie sheet, put it in the oven. So my oven, I have two racks, so I can do two cookie sheets, so four pieces of paper. And I leave it in there for 10 minutes at 225, and then just take it out, and it looks like this when you take it out. So like this one you can see it's kind of not a lot of coffee, a little bit of coffee had settled there because literally I took it out really quick. So this is how it comes out of the oven and then you just dip two more and so in, in short time I had this whole pile plus a couple pieces that I've already used. So after you do that you see it's all kind of uh, wavy. I just take it and I iron it with my iron on the high setting and then it's a little more flat so and then you know you can put it under some heavy books and it'll get it even a little more flat but I just I, I like the look of the aged paper so simple simple so once I um, had made my coffee stained paper I used the green ledger paper for this one and I just cut it a little bit smaller than my my cover so that it would fit and then I took and on this one, I think I used my, just my mini attacher, just to get all the pages together. So I I went ahead on this one, you can see the backside, I went ahead and just stapled it to my, to my booklet. And then I wanted to cover that up, so I used a, what did I do with it? This, um, it's like paper tape that has a, a peel off, so it's like a sticker. You could just use regular white paper, and, and I aged it with my oxide um, vintage photo, Distress Oxide. I've been using this for everything in this journal, so it all kind of coordinates. So I had used it on this tape. I ended up having to glue it anyway, so you can just save the tape and, and use the, um, just glue a piece of paper that's cut to the right size. 
So I put that in there next, and I, I'd wanted to cover my staples, and I had them on this back side, so um, I put in there. Now, one thing when you use these, even the little mini stapler, I go and I hammer them. I have this little jeweler hammer. You could use any kind of hammer, but it works out great. To make them really flat so they won't snag on anything, you don't even know they're there. So once that's done, then I did a, wanted to do a little pocket on the other side. When I, I learned from this one, when I am making these, it's really a good idea to think ahead of everything that you're gonna put on here because it'll define the order that you do things. So if you're gonna stitch it or you know you wanna make sure that if you have a, a closure or something that you have something on the inside that needs to be covered that you've thought of that ahead. So I kind of tried to lay out everything first in that way I could get all my elements on there. For this one, the closure wasn't gonna have anything go through because I used one of these little stickers. I just liked that it was a floral thing. This one's a bird, but um, I just used this and, and what I did was I glued just the top half so it's not glued all the way. So that way this just tucks inside there. That's an easy, easy thing. Now I used um, E6000 to adhere that because I want to make sure it's going to get a lot of wear. So I used this. Probably Mod Podge or Gel Medium or the matte gel would all work. I just had that E6000, so I went ahead and used it because I knew it's, it's industrial strength. So that was my closure, which wasn't going to go through, so that was okay. So then I did the little pocket, and I had this paper that looks like a fence. It was, it was like barn wood with a little floral, and that came out of a pad called Bramble Rose. Mine's a small, a mini pad. And I actually love it so much, I went to order some more, and they, they have, this one's called My Mind's Eye, and when I did Bramble Rose, you can get packs in bigger pages that are actually a little bit different, but the same theme and, and things, so I might order some of that, but I just love these because all of them are like vintage wallpaper and, and old wood and that kind of thing, so love that pad. Perfect for this project. So what I did was I wanted it to look like a fence, so I actually dog-eared my little things to look like a fence board. And it's just a little place to tuck some more journal cards. So the other thing that I made, so this was the cover, one part, and then coffee staining and making the paper. And then I also made these shipping tags. So you can buy shipping tags, but I didn't have any, and I wanted them to put in here. And, I mean, while I'm doing something, I can just mass make them and have them be for other projects. So, basically for this, I took um, my file folder. I have a bunch of uh, old file folders right now because I just cleaned out all my files and I had a bunch that I, you know, they're kind of worn, but they still, they could work, but I just like the cardstock of it while I have it. So, I've just been using that, but... They can be any size. I've actually made a whole bunch that are all just different. I used up whatever scraps of, of cardstock I had. Some are shorter. If you're doing it for a certain project, obviously you want it to fit in the pocket that you're working on. So you either do a bunch of head of different sizes or, or measure what you need it to fit into. These are a little bit bigger. So basically you just cut a rectangle. And then what I did was you can cut one just the little corner off that you want. And then to make sure it's the same size, you can just cut, flip it over the other side, and then that way you get your cuts are the same. So that. And then, I didn't punch the hole in the top first because what I wanted was I wanted these little reinforcements. And so I have a Cricut machine that I have, I've had it for a couple of years, but I really don't, I'm trying to use it more. I just, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm sure there's videos out there to show you tricks and how to do things. But for me, it's just been kind of a challenge to want to just teach myself. So I've been um, using it more and trying to make things. So anytime I see something like a little shape or something like that, that I need lots of, I think oh, I can do that with my Cricut machine if I, but I need a pattern. So 
on a, if you have a Cricut machine, you know probably way better how to use it than I do, but you, you can take shapes. It's basically working on, on a piece of graph paper on your computer. And so what I did was I grabbed the, a circle shape and then two square shapes. You can unlock them and change the shape of them to make it a rectangle. So I actually overlaid a square over the circle and then another one because I had an actual shipping tag, which I don't have one here. I have it somewhere. Oh wait, maybe right here. Yeah, oh, I took it off already though. I had a couple of shipping tags. That's how it gave me the idea. This is a real one that you buy. So I could kind of see the shape of the reinforcement and so when I looked at that, I thought, okay, break that down into what shapes those are. So I thought a circle with, there's a flat line, so I need a square. And then it's a little bit bigger here and it wraps around. So I needed it to kind of be a rectangle in the middle. So basically what I did on my graph paper was I found the circle square and another square. I made it kind of half the shape I needed and you, you weld those on Cricut. There's a weld button <clears throat> and it will, take each of those elements and basically make them one element. And then I needed the circle on the top also to cut out for the hole. So I just kind of, I basically took a, a, a ruler and measured the real one to kind of get the size that my circle needed to be and the same with the hole. So once I kind of had those elements on my graph paper on my computer, then you can duplicate and flip it so that you have a mirror image and then weld that together. It's one, one piece, but it's actually two cuts. So you have to have the brown, the brown craft paper part is one cut. And then that other hole in the middle is a second cut. And then you duplicate those all over your, till you have a whole full page and then you cut them out with your Cricut. So if you don't have a Cricut, you're not gonna do that, right? But for me, it was just another thing I learned how to do that I was really happy about because now I always have these, this pattern. You can also do them by hand. They probably, I know they make, cause I ordered one and actually I'm gonna send it back cause it didn't work. But they actually make reinforcement punches. I don't recommend this one. Um, this brand, uh, We Are Memory Keepers, this brand of stuff seems to work much better. So I think, and I think they have one of these reinforced hole punches. So I, I recommend that brand because they work smoothly. But I don't need that one anymore because now I have my own little thing. And if I want to make one look like that hexagon shape or whatever, I can do that. So um, anyway, so that was a fun thing. I, I made those and then I made a whole bunch because you have a whole page. So this basically, I've used some, but this was a whole page of those um, cut out. And I actually, I like to save everything. I thought this is even a, a nice stencil for a texture. Um, I just happen to have some of this cardstock that looks like the same brown kind of craft paper thing. Um, so that's what I use to make mine. And then, of course, I could glue them on, but I have that sticker machine, so that Xyron sticker machine, so and it's two and a half inches wide. So I just um, stuck those in there. So now I have them on sticker back paper, so anytime I need to use them, I just can peel one off. Now, I didn't have a scoring um, for my Cricut. They make a scoring uh, blade, and I didn't have that, so I basically hand folded all these before I put it in my sticker machine because I want to know where that middle is. So that then when I put it on here, if you can see that, I can just find the line, just kind of eyeball it there. And then use my hole punch on my tag. Now I could make these with my Cricut too, but I don't really need, I mean, it's easy to just cut them with your paper cutter. So that, I have my little shipping tag and it looks like the real thing. So I made a bunch of those, different sizes. And then to make them into look like a little journal card, I just had some stamps. I used the uh, Vintage Photo Archival ink, this one, to stamp. And then I did a little bird on that one. And then I had this pen. I, d I don't know the maker because it's one I've had forever. 
but it's kind of a sepia color. I just used that in my, um, like a quilters, because it has all the quarter inch lines. And then I just did that and then drew the lines and I did them on both sides. So now it's just a nice little journal card that you can write on. So that was the inside of that one. And then for the string of this one, I have fallen in love with this kitchen string. It's like three, three ply, three little cords when you split them up. Well, actually it could be even more. They're tiny, tiny ones in there. But I just like how it kind of curls. So for that, I had made a whole bunch of it that I keep, but I used um, this uh, Distress Oxide Spray. And it, this one's in Gathered Twigs is the color. And I just have made a whole bunch of, there's burlap in there too. Oh, I've, used, I've used all my one I just made up, but it's the, I just like the color and it just has that nice little age look. So that's on my tags. So that was one. I made this one for my garden journal and I just loved it so much. I decided I wanted to make a couple more because I had some ideas about, about the, little envelopes and whatnot. So I wanted to do one, a travel one, because I want to make a, a travel journal for myself. So this one is about the same size. I just ended up liking that size, partly because when you do, when you cut this paper, if you do it, I think this is like two, I want to say two and three quarters, or two and a half. It lets you cut the paper yeah, it's two and three quarters, so you get three across and then two down. So you get six little pages out of one sheet of paper. So this one, I found this travel, this world map paper that I love. This is a Tim Holtz. This is out of the same uh, pack that I've been working on. I'll put it in the I'll put it in the um, description because I really like this paper. I'll be ordering another pack of it, but it's a Tim Holtz pack, and it just had this map of the world. So I loved that text, and I wanted that to be on my flat. So that meant my map paper. This was North and South America up here were on the top, and then the part that was on the bottom of it was actually this other page, I think. So what I did, uh, you know, I needed the rest of the paper here on the other one. It was the opposite. It was like my words were here and then the rest of the paper. So you just, that's what I mean by you need to kind of lay it out in your head as you're picking out paper, if you care what, you know, if there's words on it or whatever. So that was that one. I did it about the same size. But when I, when I did this one, I kind of had, it, it went a different direction. The other one went this way. Well, that would have bugged me that this was upside down. So I turned it this way. And I'm right-handed, so when I opened it, I had thought about putting the pad here, and I thought, no, I, I like it better in the middle, so I'll just make a pocket. So for this one, I did my this a little bit different, too. I did it so that it's removable. Instead of stapling it right to my thing, I can, if I use it up, I can add another one or you know not have one in there at all. But I just I liked the option of being able to take it out. So for this one, I went ahead and I just used another piece of file folder and then I um, I stapled my pages to that and then used the same tape. So it's all in there good. I cut this a little bit smaller and it's even shorter on one side because when I put it in my envelope, it's sewn on this side. So that side's in, in glued and so it's a little tighter there. So I just wanted it to fit nice. So for this one, the pocket, I, w I wanted a slot for my notepad, but then I liked having this angled pocket here. So to make that, I used um, one of these. You don't need this, you can just freehand it, but I like everything to be kind of, I was able to then see through and kind of see where I wanted the angle to go. These come in different sizes. I have some smaller ones too. So it's just a nice way to make a nice even curve. So that kept that one simple, just that pocket and the thing, and then I, um, for the closure, and this is where it's kind of nice to think ahead, which I didn't do it on this one, is my 
my closure was going to be inside this pocket and I had already sewn this on so it would have been better to put the closure first and then do the sewing because I, w I wouldn't have had it if, if I would have like sewn here and glued it it would have been even harder to get in there so I found just a vintage button and then I just it had big enough holes that I could use that same string um, to sew it right in there and for me I used um, just because I'm working with paper I actually put a brad in there, just these little, just to kind of reinforce that hole. So you can buy these if you, you know, they're different sizes. This was just kind of a collection of different sizes. And then you put, um, it has this little setter. So you, you make a hole and I made my hole. This size actually makes the hole big enough to fit the brad in. So I use that and then it, you just, Hold that down and then hammer it and it it flowers it out so it's like a just a little reinforcement so those i like to use a lot too so i i did this when i had a button on the inside and the outside just so that i had a place with holes to keep it from pulling through and then i just used it as a little wrap around kind of tie but i love how that turned out and then i stitched it of course i aged it with my distress oxide all around the edges first and then i just with my sewing machine, I just stitched it. And I just like that last little detail. This gives you a little finished edge. Also, obviously I've used my corner punch for the corners and you can do that or not. And then this one, I love this one. This one is, I had the same paper pack, but it was um, St. Mary's High School, 1928-29 report card. I just love that for the, the flap and then it has the elementary ruled paper. And then, so this one, I just, I loved this below, on the paper pad, below this was the report card. And I wanted to have that be part of it too, so I decided to make that be a pocket. I wanted to see it just like it, it was before. It, this was just the continuation of the paper. So I went ahead and cut that, when I cut that off of there, I went ahead and made it the size that it could be a front pocket here. And then, like I said before, I put the button on before I sewed all this together so that I could work with it. Um, and this one, in case, the button, I was trying to find just the right thing that was kind of a school-themed thing. And I, I started to use, I had these, um, I had taken a typewriter apart before to make jewelry. And I had saved all these little, I thought these would be cute bezels that I could use for necklaces. And then I still had the, the keys. In this case, the keys are all like a cardboard backing within the letter just on the top. So you can actually peel those thinner, which I had done. I had taken all the cardboard backing. And my plan was to do the typewriter key as the button. But I would have had to either make holes or figure out something and I, I was going through my buttons and I found a vintage black one that was perfect size that fit inside one of those bezels so I just did that I I went ahead and sewed it on the same way with like I did the other one with just the using this the kitchen string cord and then I just I put the button on and then I just glued the bezel over that afterwards so I like how that turned out and then this is the little front pocket and then inside this one, I also wanted pockets. So I, I used some of uh, graph paper um, pocket. This was all from the same Tim Holtz uh, pack. It has some, one part had a little graph paper. So I made that a pocket on the inside. And then on this one, I had scored it in the wrong place to, to for my closure. So I wanted to kind of stiffen that up again because I scored it a second time. So I just, this had like a multiplication table one and I just, so I just made another little pocket. And then for this one, I did something a little bit different on the pad and I like, I like how it's gonna work, I think. So this one I used the graph paper and lined paper, but when I, I did the pad, I went and sewed all the way across uh, beforehand just to kind of get it all together and I liked how that worked because when, you, when you're when you sewing a straight stitch but it's a thick pile of paper, even if you have your stitch length uh, further apart, 
for some reason it, it stitches them really close together because of the thickness of the paper. So it made it like a perforation. So these will actually peel off like perforated paper. And I just, I love that. I think I might do that on all of them just to give you that perforation. So then I, I used my, um, my paper tape to cover the top, but then I sewed it into the booklet. So these can all tear off and I just thought that was another little fun detail. So I thought I'd share that. So that's three, I did three of those. So next, um, I'm gonna work on, I do have um, the next part, but I'm gonna put that in a separate video just so these don't get too long. And that way you can go work on this part and then check in with me for the next one. So I hope you're working along with me. I would love to hear your comments, things that you're, um, ideas that you're coming up with. Feel free to share those with me and have a great rest of your day. Now go make something, bye.